What do these six products have in common? Baby food, beer, Windex, Starbucks coffee, weed killer? They all have varying amounts of a very dangerous and deadly chemical. This chemical is known as dihydrogen monoxide. Dihydrogen monoxide is naturally occurring, but is also placed into a lot of our products, and it's found its way into our rivers, our lakes, and our oceans. Today, I'm going to raise dihydrogen monoxide awareness. Dihydrogen monoxide will kill you if you inhale it, but we ingest it every day because the government allows big companies to put it in a lot of our foods. We need to ban dihydrogen monoxide, but the government won't do anything about it. In fact, serial killers, rapists, and drug dealers have all admitted to taking dihydrogen monoxide before they committed their crimes. Some of them are so addicted that they'll, if they went three days without dihydrogen monoxide, they would die. So why hasn't the government done anything about dihydrogen monoxide? Well, that's because it's just water. Notice that everything I just told you about water is true, but it was very misleading. That's because I lied to you with true statistics. This happens more often than you may think. That's why today I'm actually going to tell you how to lie with statistics. Or, more accurately, how to tell when someone else is lying to you with statistics. Now, you may be thinking, Numbers don't lie, and to a certain extent, that's true. However, people do lie, and they can twist numbers and graphs in order to say just about anything they want. That's why you need to be very skeptical of graphs. First, we'll look at bar graphs. Look at this, for example. These two bar graphs show exactly the same data, but the one on the left suggests that there's been a big increase, whereas the one on the right suggests that almost nothing has changed. It's all in the presentation. Line graphs are not any better. The one on the left suggests that there was a measly 10% increase. The one on the right suggests that there was a whopping 10% gain. Same data, but a very different message. It's all in the presentation. Pie charts are a little more objective because there's no scaling involved, but that doesn't mean that they're better. In fact, often fancy graphs like this are just made to hide the fact that the data isn't very significant in the first place. Ultimately, you should be skeptical of any chart. However, people in general are very trusting. They're skeptical of words, but they'll trust numbers and studies and charts. You should not be so confident. Look at this chart, for example. This shows a strong correlation between autism and organic food sales. Does this mean that organic food causes autism? The graph sure seems to suggest this. But if you draw that conclusion, you also have to conclude that eating cheese causes people to die by being tangled in their bed sheets. I don't think most of you would believe that. And that's because correlation is not the same thing as causation. Let me give you another example that's a little easier to understand. Ice cream sales do not cause shark attacks. They just both increase at the same time in the summer months, when it's warmer. Correlation is not the same thing as causation. Now, there are lots of other ways that statisticians will deceive you. One common way is by emphasizing or focusing on minor statistics. Some unimportant statistic can be used to easily distract you from what should be the real purpose of a study. For example, let's look at some health statistics. First, smoking. Smoking is healthy because, after all, smokers are less likely to die of age-related illnesses. <laughs> sounds great, right? Well, yeah, it sounds great, until you realize that's really just saying that smokers are more likely to die young. <laughs> and what about driving in the fog? Do you know that it's, traffic accidents are way more common in clear weather than in the fog? It's true. But does that mean fog is safer? Of course not. It just means that it's not foggy very often in the first place. And what about flying? Should you take a bomb on a plane? It's safer because the likelihood of there being two bombs on the same plane is astronomically low. I think everyone can see that there are faults in this kind of logic. Ultimately, you should be skeptical of any study because you can find a fluke study that can say just about anything you want. That's the nature of statistics. The only studies you should trust are the ones that are replicated often with consistent results. And that's if the statistics are based on studies at all. After all, 78% of statistics are made up on the spot. So why should you trust them?
Ultimately, bottom line, you shouldn't. Thank you.